Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Think, Walk, and Talk Like an Alpha. Well, I've got a really good email success story from a guy who he had a lot of shit going on in his life that was kind of fucked up that led to his breakup with his girlfriend, which was something he feared tremendously and obviously coming across my work. And so he shares how his life has changed. He said he was drinking excessively, he was smoking lots of weed, doing lots of drugs, and he had just absolutely no direction in his life. So I got a quote that I wrote in this topic and we're gonna go through his email because I mean just a, a few short months, this guy has completely changed his life and his perception of himself for the better. It really doesn't take a lot other than making a decision. That's the most important thing is number one, you decide what you want. Number two, why you want it. And then when you have your what and your whys in order, then you got to take action to make it happen. And that's what this guy is doing. He's in the phase of taking action to change everything in his life. So the quote says, life and living at your personal best is to be found living in the present moment taking action towards becoming all that you are capable of being. The action you take or fail to take today is what will determine what your future becomes. Winners expect to win and take the actions required to eventually manifest their grandest goals and dreams despite the fact that success lies far off in the future or seems unrealistic to others. Losers quit and give up on their dreams when the first sign of difficulty or challenges arise and then they seek to sabotage the dreams of those around them so they can convince them to give up like they have so they can feel better about their lack of success. Misery loves company. Your inner circle ideally should consist of people who are just as committed to their own greatness as you are to your own and who celebrate and encourage your victories and continued perseverance. A fucking men to that. If you got a shitty peer group, find a new peer group. Life is hard and success takes a really fucking long time. If you've read my new book, Mastering Yourself, which is available to read for free in the members area, I detail painfully everything I went through, all the ups and downs throughout the course of my life as my purpose and my mission changed and evolved and I became comfortable listening to that internal drive when it was a career or a business, when I knew it was time to move on because the internal enthusiasm wasn't what it once was. It's hard to do that because we're surrounded, the majority of the people that you're going to encounter in life are stuck where they're at in life. They've convinced themselves through a personal story that they've created that what they really want, what their dreams really are, is just not realistic. They've given up. And therefore, because they've given up and they've convinced themselves of their personal story, anytime they encounter somebody like you or me who's trying to move beyond that little comfort zone or that little box where all of us tend to live, they're going to do everything they can to discourage you and tell you to give up. It's not realistic. It's stupid. Only certain types of people achieve those kinds of things because if they can convince you to give up like they have, then guess what? You just gave them more justification for their mediocre life. So don't be somebody else's justification for mediocrity. Sometimes, unfortunately, you're going to have to leave those people behind in your life, especially if they're really going out of their way to convince you that you need to give up on your dreams because like I said, I talk about this in my, in my new book, Mastering Yourself Extensively. It takes a decade, a minimum of a decade when you start out on a new business or a new career path to, f to figure out and learn all the skills, acquire the knowledge that you need and to apply it to get good at it because getting compensated to do anything in life is a result of adding a shitload of fucking massive value to other people's lives through your mission, your purpose, whatever your life's work happens to be. And you have to spend your time obsessing over it and focused on trying to get better 
and it will really help you out if you have people around you cheering you on and telling you, oh, you just had a bad day, dude. Tomorrow's a new day. Just get up and kick ass tomorrow. Miserable people are going to be like, oh, you know, you tried. You gave it your best shot, but uh, it's really not in the cards for you. You really should do something realistic like I've done. Go get yourself a regular job and punch your clock. Fuck that shit. Don't take ownership of somebody else's story. Don't let somebody else's limitations that, it, that they've imposed on themselves become your own limitations. So let's go through his email. He says, hi, coach. How are you? Fucking awesome, dude. I'm in Orlando, obviously. I'm, there's probably somebody that's going to post, hey, coach posted an old video online with the old background. It's like, I have two studios, one in Orlando, obviously, which is this one, which I've had for many, many years. And I've got the one in South Florida, which is, you know, would I rather be here in a studio or staring at the ocean? Well, obviously, it's kind of like no fucking contest, but I love both places. And that's the beauty of... When you have total control and ownership of your time, you can decide where you want to be, where you want to go, what you want to do, who you want to do it with, and where you want to do it at. And today, I'm doing it in Orlando. He says, I want to write in about my amazing and continuously growing success story and it is all thanks to your work. Well, obviously, I appreciate that, but you put in the effort. That's the important thing because without effort, you don't get any results. And without results, you don't get better and you can't learn from your mistakes. I know there are a lot of men and women out there that need to hear what your work offers. I'm a 27-year-old male from Ireland. I found your work after I got dumped by my girlfriend. Excessive drinking, weed smoking, drug taking, and having no real direction in life had slowly diminished my confidence and I fell into your infamous fear of loss mentality. Well, anybody that's using excessive drinking, excessive weed smoking, drug taking, watching too many movies, eating too much chocolate or junk food, you're using food as an escape or drugs as an escape from your life. It's like a way to justify being lazy and putting things off. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of fun, but the idea is 80% of the time, you want to be healthy. 20% 20% of the time, you want to have your glass of wine, your bong hits for Jesus, your chocolate cake, your vanilla ice cream, whatever the hell it happens to be. So if you figure on a 30-day month, if you're going to be a fuck up 20% of the time, you're talking about six days where you can just eat whatever and the rest of the time, it's full tilt bookie, taking care of yourself, eating right, exercising, doing the things that are important. Obviously, you had things totally inverted where most of the time you were being a fuck up and very rarely were you taking care of your body. Obviously, that is out of whack, out of balance, and it's going to be impossible to achieve your dreams if you're living that way. He says, guess what motherfucking happened? Yep, I lost her. So in other words, he feared losing his girl. He probably tried to force things to get her to stick around. And because he wasn't focused on his purpose and his mission in life, eventually she completely lost all attraction and decided she was going to go seek a guy who had his shit together. I ultimately was sick of relationships ending. I had four serious relationships at 27 years of age and decided, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to apply these principles in Corey's book and see what happens. Well, that's the beauty of what I teach. Even if you think I'm full of fucking shit – If you apply the things I teach in my book, they will work for you. Both books. That includes 3% Man, my first one, and Mastering Yourself. And again, both of them, if you just go to my website and subscribe to the newsletter, you can read them both totally for free. So you have absolutely no fucking excuses. Plus, you can also get either book. Actually, with the deal that Amazon's got going on in Audible, you get two books if you do a free trial with Audible. And... You can get both of my books totally for free, the audio versions of them, if you're so inclined. But if you're skeptical, go read them for free on my website. Go apply the things in there. And then once you see that, wow, this shit fucking works, then go buy a copy of it. Find me somebody else that's willing to give away their best stuff on the internet. I haven't seen it. It's like people still haven't figured that out yet. But if your product sucks, if your book sucks, then obviously nobody's going to go and pay for it. 
Because you give it away for free, they're like, yeah, this sucks like I thought, and then they don't buy it. So that's the important thing. you got to have a good product. He says, then came the new year. When 2018 hit, I decided to change my lifestyle for good as my previous 27 years had not been working. Since 2018, I have – now this guy's got a lot of rituals, success rituals, which are really great. Meaning day in and day out, these things happen no matter what. This is what it takes to be disciplined. Number one, I've been doing daily meditation. Number two, I'm hitting the gym at 6 a.m. every morning before work and I'm in incredible shape. Sounds like church bells. I quit heavy drinking. Quit drugs. I've been journaling. That's another great thing to do is getting a journal, something with just basically blank sheets of paper. Write down your victories. Write down the things that you learned. Write down the things that you're grateful for. Remember, your brain is going to give you more of whatever you focus on in life. And so if you take five to ten minutes, maybe every day when you get up or before you go to bed at night, just journaling about all the great things that have happened today or yesterday or whatever you've learned, whatever you focus on expands. So if you're focusing and you're, you're making a conscious effort like this guy is to journal, he's teaching his brain to continue to look for more things to be grateful for. Oh, I talked to a really pretty girl today, brunette blonde hair, whatever it happened to be, you write that down. And as you notice more beauty, guess what? More beauty tends to show up. If you're grateful for a job opportunity that came your way and you write that down, you tend to notice that other job opportunities tend to come your way. Again, it's whatever you focus on in life, you're going to get more of. And journaling is a great tool, a great way to do that. So awesome job there in journaling, dude. I started reading and studying self-development heavily. Well, I think it was Jim Rohn said that a college education will earn you a living, but self-education will earn you a fortune. That's one of the reasons why I do so well is because college is great. When I was in the construction industry, I needed that degree to get the job that I wanted or to earn the income that I wanted in the industry. But the reality is, is everything I learned after college, all the stuff that I taught myself about business, about life, about self-development, about relationships, everything that I focused on, the best stuff that I've learned, all came, all shit that I learned outside of college. So it's really super important. Just because you got a piece of paper from a college doesn't mean that's it and your learning is over forever. If you don't continue to be a lifelong learner, you're going to get lapped and passed by other people on the journey of life who – because knowledge helps you become more efficient in how you apply your actions. And the idea is you want to work smarter, not harder. You want to learn from people who already know, who have made all the mistakes and made all the fuck-ups so you can learn exactly the right things to do and the wrong things to avoid. It doesn't make any sense to reinvent the wheel. He says, I've grown my removals business by 25%. I guess he's got some – I don't know what a removals business is, but I'm sure somebody will post that in the comments. I've been eating a clean, alkaline diet. So obviously you probably read Dr. Young's books, The PH Miracle, uh, Sick and Tired, Reclaim Your Inner Terrain, uh, the, also the books by Dr. Gundry, which I, I – and I talk about those in Mastering Yourself. I become a more confident man day by day. Well, what, what grows your confidence? Because a lot of people are, how do I become more confident? Well, confidence comes from knowing what you know how to do and doing it really fucking well. And the only way you get to do something really well is you practice at it. Everybody starts out at everything as a total novice and a total beginner. Nobody comes out the womb and they're slamming slam dunks like LeBron James the next day. It doesn't work that way. You have to learn. You have to practice. You have to spend thousands and thousands of hours to really master something. But the more you practice it, the less the fear – you're going to feel the fear, I should say, and the more easier it's going to get. Changing my lifestyle has increased my confidence and I notice how people watch me as I enter a room now. It feels magical. I mean how many times have you been in a room or a party or somewhere and – the best looking guy or girl or most popular guy or girl or most successful guy or girl comes walking in and it's like in unison. Everybody's heads, they just – they all turn to look and see what the alphas are doing. 
That's what he notices. It's how he carries himself. It's a vibe. It's an energy. It's a mindset. It's how you feel about yourself. You feel good about yourself because of all the action you're taking and the results you're getting and the successes that you're having. Success makes you feel a little more confident. And even failure can make you feel better because you took action and you learned something. That's a win as well. It's all how you look at it. It's how you define it. That's what really matters. If you look at failure, it's like if you get excited about failure and you look forward to failure, you'll be willing to take more action than the average person that's scared of looking bad to other people. That's why you zip through things that they'll spend years stuck on. Through my own self-development, my friends are all asking about this big shift in my behavior and I've directed them to your work alongside some others but they haven't read a page. That's reality. i got lots of friends, lots of people I grew up with, I've known for many decades of my life and it's – they know what I do for a living and they admire the hell out of me and I love them to death, their family. But when it comes to drinking some green juice or a smoothie or going to the gym, they're like, eh. Eh. It's like it goes in one ear and out the other. All you can do is gently lead and suggest. It's What's interesting is until people really experience a severe amount of pain and hit the wall, that's usually the only time that they're really willing to make major changes in their life. They don't have a compelling enough reason. This constant questioning from my friends and my family has led me to discover my purpose, so I'm studying to be a life coach. So if you're going to be a life coach, yeah, what does a coach do? A coach teaches fundamentals of some kind of particular subject. Obviously, if you're a football coach like a Bill Belichick, you're teaching the fundamentals of football. If you're a life coach, somebody like me, what makes a good life coach? Well, somebody that's overcome something. In other words, you have a challenge or something you really suck at or that you're not good at, that you're terrible at, and then you acquire the knowledge that it takes to become really great at it. And then on top, after you've gotten the knowledge, then you actually apply it and then you get some experience. Then you're qualified to help somebody overcome something. So if you're going to become a coach of some kind, make sure you master something because a lot of people – I've seen this many times over the years. They look at what I make. They look at how many books I sell. They think, oh, I'm going to be just like that guy. Look at all the money I'm going to make. And they don't have a strong – they don't have strong reasons why. They don't have a strong what they want and they don't have a strong emotionally compelling reason why they want it. They might want the success that I have and they might want the money that I have but they're not really emotionally invested and in love with the idea of helping people. I've seen people create YouTube channels. They do it for a year or so. It doesn't blow up and then they just – they stop and they close down and then they just disappear. It's great that they explored it but the reality is, is you, in order to really know if something's right for you or if it's your true mission and purpose, you got to immerse yourself in it. You got to experience it or you at least got to be around people that are actually doing what you want to do to see what the day in and day out activities are like. But again, if you're going to be some kind of a coach – you got to become an expert at overcoming something, some kind of challenge. And then once you overcome that challenge, you got to absolutely master it, not only yourself, but then you got to be able to teach that to other people so they can easily master it as well. That's why I'm effective. I'm effective because I add a lot of value, because I've achieved these things in my own life. I had a lot of business and life and career success before I ever became a life coach. It's difficult to be a life coach if you're young and you have no life experience and you haven't really overcome anything. I see people come right out of college, they want to become a life coach. But what have you done with your life? What challenges have you overcome that you can help people with? Because the idea with a coach is you make it easier for somebody that's coming along behind you. Just like if you're if you're the only one of your friends that reads any of my books but yet – you can help them a little bit with a little nugget here and there that maybe they'll take on board and they'll listen to because you've mastered the things you've learned from me. It's a way that you can help people. He says, I also met one incredible woman last month at a personal development get-together. We hit it off a lot of the same interests. I cracked some stupid joke about my removals business, which wasn't funny at all, and she laughed so the attraction was obvious and the connection was immediate. 
Yeah, you're happy. You feel like you're making progress. You move in the right direction. Your business is getting better. You're focused on becoming a better human being. And she's there doing the same thing. Remember, people that like the same things tend to like each other. So you're both trying to become better human beings. So therefore, you have a lot in common because of that. It's easy to come up with things to talk about because you're both in that same vibe. Like-minded people. After an hour or so of talking, I asked her out and she rejected me. So he talked to her for a whole hour. Sometimes I see emails and I see the comments from guys. They're meeting women online or it's like they're talking to them for a real short period of time. Because think about it. If, if the conversation doesn't flow through text or through a phone call or an in-person interaction, there's absolutely no reason to go out on a date with that person and think it's going to be better. So it's really great if you've got the time and the circumstance permit to spend as much time chatting with this particular woman as possible, whether it's on the phone or because if you just get her number and you call her a week later or four or five days later or whatever, that, she's not going to barely remember you. But if you actually had a real connection like this guy is having here, then when you call for a date and you say you want to go pick her up, there's going to be no resistance to that. But if you just started texting somebody and you sent four or five texts back and forth expecting to go pick her up at her house, she's not, you haven't built a rapport yet. That's something that's real important. Make sure you build a rapport and obviously he's doing it here. So you don't obviously reject him. He says, no, seriously, I was as shocked as you probably are. Then one week later, she messaged me and we've been out on three great dates so far. So it's easy. It's effortless. You've got a lot in common. You're both at a personal development seminar. Lots of similar goals, similar values from that particular perspective. And you spend a, he spent a whole hour talking to her. Plenty of time to create rapport and jive and cause her to feel safe and comfortable. So she obviously gets ends up getting in touch with him probably before he had a chance to reach out with her to her because he made her feel so comfortable. I mean, you're not going to get rejected in a situation like that. Or most guys are talking those women right out of liking them. He didn't. He says, the reason I write this email is because your book does not teach men about women. It teaches men how to think, walk, talk, and act like an alpha male. And this spills over into every area of his life. Well, the book actually does teach men about women, but I understand your point. The more I apply your principles, the more focused I get on my own life and everything else just seems to fall into place. Yeah, when you're – it's like Dale Carnegie said, inaction breeds fear and doubt. Taking action breeds confidence and courage. I think he also said imperfect action is better than no action at all. If you're busy taking action, you're learning things. And you're feeling good. When you're busy taking action, guess what that also does? It forces you into the present moment, which is where you need to be to be at your best. Because if you're not in the present moment, if you're sitting around doing nothing, you're thinking about what may or may not happen in the future. Well, if you're sitting around doing nothing, then what you fear happening in the future is probably going to happen because you didn't do anything to move your life towards what you wanted. You didn't move, do anything to move your life in the direction of your goals and dreams. If I meet a woman and I like her, I will ask her out. Simple. I now have the confidence and the know-how how to do that anywhere where my friends still need four or five pints to suck down their throat. Men out there need to read your work to improve all areas of their life and create an amazing lifestyle that leaves them feeling confident, happy, and with a healthy dose of self-respect. I mean, you can tell from his interaction with this woman he met at the seminar, he was on that vibe. He was on that level. That's why it was just so effortless. There's no fear of rejection in that case. It's easy. Meeting awesome women just seems to come with that. Well, when you become awesome, other people are going to recognize your awesomeness and want to know what the hell you're all about. And so if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book whatever coaching option works for you. And I will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.